Hi there guys, welcome back into the Earth Lodge. Recently I acquired some large sections of bamboo with the aim to make some pretty decent traps, kind of things that you'd find in the jungle and uh, look at some of the other possibilities. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how this breaks, how it comes apart and show you a few things that um, it can be useful for. First thing we need to do is split this up and uh, to do that I'm going to use a machete and open her up. There we go. As you can see you've got all these little segments like uh, they're like little water containers basically that would have helped to transport the water up and down this is actually a grass and then following that what we can do is just clean that side up and decide what we can think about doing with this. In the past, I've used, used sections like this for bow making by laminating it to other woods. And um, what that actually means is we've got to get this completely flat, um, which looks like you're removing the lion's share of the wood. Doesn't matter, because after you get through the inner curve, there's still loads of material to work with. What I have here is one that I did earlier, as they say, and that's wrapped up in an uh, inner tube for compression. And I also, just to, so I don't get covered in glue, I wrap the whole thing in greaseproof paper. Just get in here, and we'll be able to be able to show you what we're talking about. So there, what you have is the bamboo laminated onto, on this occasion, um, uh, Osage orange and lemon wood. So. Um, I did actually push on and make a full bow. So that's the first thing I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you the bow, then we're gonna take it out and see what it performs like. And that will just be one thing covered off. So this is one bow. Back to bamboo. And as you can see, I've got um, a core of Osage orange with a little laminate of purple heart either side then a lemon wood belly and I thought I'd go for a um, python skin smoked python skin um, let it be said um, and buffalo horn knocks so we'll just put a few arrows out from this then we'll come back and we'll explore maybe a trap or two just passing by me Danny take you down into the woods where I've got my target set up. The birds are singing. And um, there's something to shoot at. When I made this, um, normally I go for 78 inches for a longbow, but because of the length of the uh, uh, Osage Orange I had, this had to be made at 66 inches, which normally means you, which always means you're going to get more poundage. And I've put quite a heavy core in it, so I've ended up with an 80 pound longbow, which is um, more than I really like shooting. So uh, 
as you can see, it's got um, quite a formidable draw. That one was on target. Let's see if I can put another one beside that one. So the bow's been a lovely little success and um, yeah, pleased with that. It really does, it really does stamp an arrow out. Anyway, let's go and have a look at a trap. So what I've got here is a couple of traps that uh, they're not prehistoric traps, but they're traps from the jungle and, and they come from places like Borneo. Um, and the engineering in this is really, really cleverly done. Um, this is called a uh, this is called a portable power scissor trap and it opens up like a set of scissors and it has a harness point on there to store the power and then we have a trigger that goes in here now the trouble is i made this one a long time ago and um it's a little bit inefficient because it's done to, it, it's just old now so Whatever this is going to kill would be coming through there. So the plan is to replace all these parts and make a new one. And they would tread on this tread plate. Bang. <laughs> and secondly to that, what I have is something called a decapitator, which is where you're using the science of two tubes that will slide in between each other. So what we have here, once again, is we have the power system on the top. And this here is the decapitation device. And there's a little rod of bamboo coming down in the middle and you put a little tread plate on the bottom. So that would be where you'd bait this whole thing up. So you'd set it like that and arm it, technically like that. And when something came in and pulled on, pulled on that uh, trigger, boom. Um, and it was a trap like that that I made when I was in China, trying to catch something like a rat or a snake. Um, but all the same, bamboo. I'm currently just flattening in the back of this one. Back of one of the nodes, you just have to chop through it. What you might find interesting, you see, we have the outer node ring from the bamboo. And if we look at this particular one, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm making up the tread plate. And they've used that section there to stop this traveling through this section. So that's kind of like, we'll be sitting in here And that stopper point is going to stop it travelling through. There's lots of little features though that, um, that are there that I still haven't shown you that are points of interest and points of understanding and material. So um, just quickly go back to that and we'll look at another one which is how the tread plate works. So the tread plate is this little section here that goes up and down and as you can see because this is damaged I've put a little bit of cordage around it but um, this has been split and it's travelled down here and the split stops here so how do you stop that happening? Well, that's what I'm going to show you. This is from the jungle. This is from tribal people that have lived and um, they know the materials, they know the materials really well. In some mistakes, you know, like I know Flint, well, they, they know this stuff. A lot of trial and error. There we go, that slipped off clean there. So just checking this against the model one more time here. That end is going there. I want the tread plate to kick off from here. 
Now we're going to stop that running right through because we're actually going to bruise that area. Like that. Just bruised it in. And then I'm going to put that there because it's the size of the tread plate that he's going to be standing on. And that's beginning its journey of cracking. And that will crack down until it meets that point. And now I should be able to lift that up and down. There we go. From that point, then it won't crack any further. And because we bruised that, we can lift it up and down now. And that's where the crack stops. That's pretty ingenious, don't you think? And it doesn't take a lot of weight to push it down. So for something small that's going through that doorway, that's going to work just nice. Next, I'm going to make it a little rivet. Just to pin everything together. is just a little round wooden bolt really something like that as it goes through to and there so that's gone through all three of them like so let's just check the mechanics is coming up. It's anchoring. There goes our little needle. And drop that down. And that's set and it's good to go. So what I do know about around here is the squirrels love peanuts. And nature also loves a tunnel. So we set our trap. And the lovely thing about this is Put it like that. We'll set a few little nuts in front. Bit of an invitation. And we'll put some as an invitation behind there too. And make the area that I just put my arm in less of an invitation. What I could also do is tie this onto here so that if it wasn't an instant kill then uh, it couldn't drag, drag the trap off um, so we could actually harness that. So uh, yeah there you go there's a little bit about bamboo uh, one or two of the possibilities. Portable power scissor trap 
armed and dangerous. Anyway, if you enjoyed that, I hope you're uh, subscribing and following and um, feel free to comment and let me know what you think. Cheers, guys.